Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hextuber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a whooshing background like this one in Flash. So to start off with, let's take a look at what this whooshing background actually is. If I click on it, we can see that it's a graphic symbol. And if we scroll down, we can see that it's looping. So it's a looping graphic symbol. If you don't know what a graphic symbol is or how to make them loop, I recommend you check out my looping tutorial on my website, hexjibber.com. So assuming you do know that, let's jump in and take a look at this looping graphic symbol. I'm gonna double click on it, and you'll see that our timeline changes to show the timeline that's nested within this HD red diagonal whoosh graphic symbol that's looping in our timeline. And you can see that it's made up of three keyframes, one, two, and three. And each one of those keyframes is lasting for two frames, which is to make our loop go more slowly. And each one of those pictures is subtly different, which gives us this nice kind of looping whooshing effect, like so. So I wasn't able to make these images in Flash. I had to make them in Photoshop. And if we click on them, you can see that it says here in the properties that they're a bitmap. Now, a bitmap image is made of pixels, as distinct from a vector image, which is made up of points. If you don't understand the difference, there's a great lesson on my website for the difference between bitmaps and vectors, which I recommend you check out. So assuming you understand all that, let's jump over to Photoshop. So first things first, we need to create a new file for us to draw in. So let's go to File, New, pretty self-explanatory there. And let's go into the presets library, Film and Video. So these are presets set up for making things for film and for video. And we're going to choose the preset HDTV 1080p, which is the resolution for full HD. So if we do it in this nice big resolution, you can always scale it down if you're using it in smaller projects, and it means that we can get more detail in there. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go, we've got a 1080p canvas there for us to start drawing on. At this point, it's worth noting that this will be a lot easier if you have a graphics tablet. A good starter graphics tablet is the Wacom Bamboo. Uh, it costs about £40 in the UK or about $55 in the US. I'm not sponsored by Wacom. Uh, they're just the best tablets that I've come across and they're pretty industry standard. I use a Wacom Intuos 3 large A4 tablet, which just gives me a bit more room to move around and more levels of pressure sensitivity. So talking about pressure sensitivity, let's set up Photoshop so we get the best settings possible. I'm gonna enable this option up here, which is called always use pressure for opacity. That means that the harder I push down on my graphics tablet, the darker my brush is gonna be. And I have the master opacity set to 50, which makes each stroke half as opaque as it would be normally. So to start drawing, I'm gonna make sure that I've got black and white. I'm just gonna start doing really nice long strokes from the corner outwards. And sometimes it's easier to do these if you zoom out a little bit. And you can keep it really nice and messy to begin with because once we apply some effects, it won't be quite as clear how badly we've drawn this. And the thinner the brush strokes you do, the more detail there'll be in your whooshing background when it's finished. And in this first drawing, I'm going to make the corners here and here the darkest elements of my image. And I'm going to leave a nice bright line down the middle here, you can see, which is going to be our visual constant. So in each one of our three drawings, we're going to have this line going down the middle, which will make it easier for viewers to tell that these images go together. This is quite important in looping animations. If every element in every frame is different, it's quite difficult for people to understand that they're part of the same thing. 
So you can see I'm gradually building up this image. I'm just going to keep drawing in these corners to make sure that they're nice and dark so we get that contrast. And I'm trying to keep the lines as straight as I can. So there we go. So it's basically, it's almost like a gradient from dark to light in the center in this particular example. So there we go, we've got quite a lot of detail there. I'm just zooming in and out by holding command and hitting plus or minus, or that would be control on the PC. So I think this is looking okay, and we're ready to proceed. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to convert this layer into a smart object. If you've not come across smart objects before, what they enable you to do is apply effects and then keep tweaking and adjusting them to your heart's content rather than you having to commit an effect to a layer and then undo it in order to be able to change it. So I'm going to right click on this background layer. I'm going to go convert to smart object. And that's it. It's as simple as that. It's now called layer zero. And I just need to go up to the filter menu here and go to blur. And I want to choose motion blur. When I click on that, it'll start previewing it in the background here. And you can see that our image is starting to look a lot more like the whooshing backgrounds that we looked at in Flash. And essentially, with motion blur, you have to get the right angle. Um, so we want the angle of our blur to follow the angle of our brush strokes. And I figured out that that's probably 42 for this example. The distance of the blur is essentially how much the blur is applied. So if you stick it up to 2000, it'll be very, very blurred, but it tends to wash out your image a little bit if you do that. So I've left mine at 532, like so. Now if I click OK, and then I decide that I want to change the settings of my motion blur, you can see it's here as what's called a smart filter. So I just need to double click on it. I get those options again, and I can tweak it to my heart's content. Just going to cancel out of that. And next up, we're going to apply an adjustment layer in order to change the color of this whoosh. So I'm going to click here in my adjustments on the color balance. If you don't have adjustments, you can get them in window adjustments. So I'm going to click on the color balance. You can see it's popped up here in the properties and it's created an adjustment layer called Color Balance 1. The advantage to doing it this way is that you can keep tweaking the color balance as much as you like, and again, you don't have to commit it to the actual image itself. This is what's called non-destructive editing, and it just makes your workflow in Photoshop loads more versatile. So, swiftly moving on, I've got a choice between midtones, highlights, and shadows here in my color balance. So, at the moment, I'm adjusting the color of the midtones. I'm going to bump them quite high up into the reds. Maybe pull down the yellow a little bit. In the highlights, I'm going to shove the reds up, yellow down a little bit too. And in the shadows, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to stick the red up pretty high. Maybe pull yellow down a little bit. So. I might take the green out of the midtones. I don't think I'll do that so much with the highlights. And really, this is just your personal preference about what sort of color you want. There's no real science behind it. I just want a red with a little bit of yellow and orange in it. So there we go. We've got a whoosh that's looking pretty respectable. I think this corner here could do with being a little bit darker. And again, one of the cool things about using smart filters and smart objects is that you can continue to edit them. So if I double click on layer zero, I'll jump back into my image without any filters or anything applied to it. I can just get the brush and just darken this corner up a little bit. So I'm just drawing, adding that darkness in there. Sounding quite emo. Okay, and when I'm finished, you can see we're in layer 0.psb. That's just the layer, the smart object that we're editing. We need to save it before we carry on. So I'm going to hit Command S on the Mac or Control S on the PC to save that. We can just close it. 
So that's now applied itself in our picture here. You can see that we've got all of our filters applied and it's also nice and dark here in the corner. So I'm gonna go file, save as, choose somewhere on your hard drive to save it. I'm gonna call this one whooshing BG background diagonal 001. Click save. There we go, marvellous. So that's our first one done. We might come back to it and tweak it a little bit later. Uh, so to create our second one, it's pretty simple. Just go File, Save As, and change the name to 002, like so. And we're just going to change the look of this layer so that we've got darkness in a different part of our image. So this would be a good time to actually check out what we've done in the past. You can see here in my flash example, we've got dark on the edges, light in the middle, and very light in the center. In this one, it's a bit more mixed up. It's still light in the center, but it's got some dark very near it, and it's kind of mid-tony in the edges. So I think we're going to replicate that. So you see we're in washing background diagonal 002. So I can double click on my layer zero and start messing around with it. So I'm going to start putting in some much darker lines here nearer the center. I'm darkening it up nicely. And one of the advantages of using a 1080p resolution is that you can use a smaller brush and get quite a lot of detail. Um, so once I've done that, it's kind of darkening it up near the center here is I can start adding some lighter mid-tone values to these edges, like this. So I'm breaking up that black that we had before. And because I'm using a 45 pixel brush on this 1080p, it won't, we're getting some nice detail in there. So you can see, there we go, and I might switch back to black. Put a few more black lines in there just to break up this white a little bit. Okay, let's save that layer0.psb. And see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty nice, I think. Let's just open our first one, see how they look together. So I think we get the same size. I think they're looking sufficiently different to facilitate that whoosh. So that's good stuff. Let's save that second one, and then go save as, and change it to three. So this is our final one. Let's just jump back to Flash and take a look at the example of our third one here. So we've got very light uh, areas in the kind of middle, and it's mid-tony at the edges, and we've got these kind of dark values in the center. There's no exact science to this, but these three images have to be sufficiently different for you to be able to tell the difference between them. Essentially, all these whooshes are is a sort of simulated motion blur, within animation to make it look like things are passing by the background at such high speed that they blurred out of focus. So in our third one, let's double click on layer zero and start tweaking. So I think we can have it really quite light around the edges here, like that. Let's lighten this area up here. and have this part here in the middle, the darkest. I'm just drawing some really nice dark areas there. You'll be able to hear my graphics tablet scribbling away here. I'm using some felt nibs with my Intuos 3, which gives me a bit more friction um, and allows for more control when I'm drawing. So there we go, let's save that, see how that looks.
So it's looking quite different to this one. I think I might just lighten up this area here a little bit, just for a bit of contrast. Essentially, the more different they are, the better, but you want to maintain this area in the middle of whiteness so that viewers can tell that this is the visual constant in the center. So let's save that again, jump back. There we go. It's looking pretty snazzy, I think. Gonna save that number three there. And the acid test of whether this is gonna work or not is by importing it into Flash. So I'm just gonna close these in Photoshop, jump into Flash, and I'm gonna create a new project at 1080p. These are my own special templates, they're at 25 frames a second, but you'll have the media playback templates in Flash you can see there's an HD TV 1080 there that you can use. So I'm going to use my 25 frames a second template there. I tend to work at 25 frames a second because I live in Europe and that is the standard over here. So all we need to do, I'm going to delete that action safe layer, is go to File, Import, Import to Stage. If this is greyed out, your layer is probably locked. Make sure it's not locked. Go File, Import, Import to Stage. And you should be able to find those files on your computer. Go to Import those now, all three. And it'll ask you whether you want to import them as keyframes or flash layers. I'm going to import them as keyframes. Click OK. So you have to do that three times as it imports those three images into Flash. And because it's imported them onto different layers, you'll need to drag the keyframes all onto one layer, like so. So they're all on the number one layer there. You can see I've left each keyframe on for two frames. This last one, we'll have to press F5 to extend it. And we can delete these of the layers that don't have anything in them. So this is our whoosh at the moment. I'll just click on this loop symbol so that we can just see how that loops. I think that's looking pretty good. I might want to add a little bit more detail and just tweak it around, maybe change the colors. But essentially, that's a really nice functional diagonal whoosh. Just a couple of things that we need to do to actually make this into a looping graphic symbol. I'm going to turn looping off. And I'm going to select all of these keyframes. So to do that, click on the first one hold down shift, click on the last one, and they're now all selected. I'm going to right click, go to copy frames, and then go to insert new symbol. So we can call this diagonal whoosh red. It's always good to name your symbols, it makes organizing your library much more easy. I click OK. And inside this diagonal whoosh red symbol, I can just right click on the first keyframe and paste in those three keyframe images that we've created there. If I jump back to scene one, I can create a new layer, delete the original one because we've copied those out now. And I'm just going to drag from the library that diagonal whoosh red into my scene. If I want to get it to be in the center, it's worth using the Align panel here. If you don't have it, it's in Window Align, which is there, or you can do Command-K. Uh, if you tick Align to Stage and then click this button here, Align to Horizontal Center, and this one to Align to the Vertical Center, it'll be smack dab in the middle of your 1080p project. And we can see that that now plays as a graphic symbol looping in our timeline. If we hold down command, we can make it last for as long as we like. So it's now whooshing. At the moment, it's called layer four. I don't think that's clear enough. So here's a nice little trick that you can use. If you right click on the symbol and go distribute to layers, it'll copy that symbol out of layer four and onto a new layer called diagonal whoosh red. So it's named the layer after the symbol that's on it. We can ditch that layer 4, which is a bit inscrutable. 
We've now got a nice layer that's labeled with our looping graphic symbol on it. So if you click on it, it's a graphic and it'll default to looping in the timeline. There's one last thing that we can do to it just to make it look a little bit better. You can see it might be looking a little bit pixely, although you might not be able to tell if you're watching this on YouTube. So here's a couple of little tricks to make it look better in Flash. If we go to Publish Settings, we can make sure that the JPEG quality is set to 100. Click OK. That should make it display much more crisply. But we can also fold down all of these bitmaps in our library. So to select them all, click on the first one, hold down Command on the Mac or Control on the PC. You can select the lot, right click, go to Properties. And there's a little tick box here for Allow Smoothing. We want that to be set to Yes. And we also want the compression to be lossless. We click OK. We should have a really nice crisp image there. A really cool looking washing background. So it's as simple as that. That's making a diagonal washing background. Next up, we're going to look at how to make a perspective washing background. It's exactly the same principle, but instead of going diagonally, it's going into the distance. So before we jump into Photoshop, let's just take a really quick look at what a diagonal wash looks like. So I'm just going to delete this example and get this perspective wash green, stick it on the timeline. So we can see it looks like this. And it's exactly the same principle. It starts off dark at the edges, and then that darkness moves gradually towards this center point. And then it loops. So if we double click, we've just got these three images inside a graphic symbol. That darkness moves from the outside to the inside. Really simple. So let's jump over to Photoshop and start making that happen. So if we go to File, New, and again, we're going to use that 1080p preset in the film and video preset library. Click OK. And I'm going to get my graphics tablet. I'm just going to make sure I've got black selected. I'm going to draw a tiny little sort of X there in my center. That's where we're going to be drawing towards. And I'm just going to start drawing lines like this, heading towards what we call a vanishing point when we're drawing perspective. So I'm just going to start drawing lines out from the center like this. Some of mine are going a bit wobbly. You don't have to be exact, but obviously the more exact you are, the better it's going to look. So just imagine you're drawing a big sort of sunshine. If you don't, if you're having trouble. So I'm just drawing lots and lots of lines coming out of the center like this. And what we can begin to do is just like with our first diagonal wash, we can start darkening these edges. So I'm going to start making it much darker around the edges. So we get this nice feeling of depth. And the more we lay down, the more brush strokes that we make, the better this image will start to look. And again, one of the advantages of drawing at 1080p is that you can get a lot more detail in. So around the edges, I want it to be really dark. So here we go. I'm gradually making this darker around the edges. I want this kind of mid-tone value in the center. So I'm just going to maybe darken that a little bit. Make sure it's darker here. If we keep our brush strokes following this same pattern in the center, so it's all leading towards the center. It will make it look much cooler.
build, I'm just building up layers and layers of strokes here, or strokes, making sure that it all leads towards the center point. And we've got plenty of detail in there, so when we start blurring it out, it will look quite a lot cooler. Okay, so I think I'm ready to erase this central washy part. I think we might want to just add some really subtle bits around this part here. So you know it's definitely coming from this center point. Just lighten it up a little bit. Drawing some light strokes coming out. So I think we're about ready to apply our filters. Again, we're going to make the background into a smart object and go to filter. And instead of motion blur, we're going to do radial blur. Now it might default to spin, but you want to make sure for this that it's on zoom. And we want to make sure that it's on best quality. And we want to try and figure out where the center point's going to be. So because this image is not square, we're just going to have to kind of guess. So I think somewhere like that. And I'm going to click OK. And we've got something that looks a little bit like that, which is looking pretty good. I think it's looking a little bit dodgy here. But I think we've probably got a center point in just about the right place. The advantage of using smart filters and a smart object is that we can keep tweaking this. We can move the amount of blur up and see what that looks like. So if I stick it right the way up to 100, you'll have a think. We've got something that looks like that. I think we need to do something about this area here because it's not quite working. So perhaps if I move this up a little bit. It might look a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's looking quite a lot better now. So there we go. Let's double click on our layer zero and just tidy this area up a little bit just by lightening it up very slightly. We can save that layer zero.psv. Then jump back. You can see we've got our first one there. I still think that our edges could do with darkening a little bit just so that this looks the way we want. So I'm going to darken those up with some black. And this is quite a laborious process of trial and error and tweaking. So it'll probably take you a while to figure out the best way for you to do it. Again, I'm still drawing into the center using my graphics tablet. Certainly a lot easier to do this with a graphics tablet than it is with a mouse. So there we go. Let's save that. Jump back. You can see it's much darker around the edges now. I might just turn the amount down slightly. You can see we're getting a little bit more detail there. Perhaps I'll put it at 70 or so. So we've got quite a nice beginning to our radial blur there. Next up, we want to apply a color balance adjustment layer, as we did before. But I think I'm going to make this one green. So I'm putting green up in the mid-tones, bringing in a bit of yellow. In the shadows, I'm making it nice and green. So the yellow. And the highlights, I'm going to make those green as well. It's looking kind of garish there. Maybe pull in a bit of cyan or make it a bit yellower. Okay, so I think we're ready to save that. So if we go save as, and we call that one perspective wash. Zero, zero, 001. Click OK. And then we're ready to create another copy by going to Save As. Creating number two. So let's just jump back into Flash and remind ourselves of 
what our second frame looks like. So our first one had dark around the edges. This one's very dark in the center. So we've got a very light edge here. So let's just try and mimic that. I'm going to double click on our layer zero and I'm going to start darkening up this center point here. Then I'm going to start lightening up the edges. Like that. So they're really light. Like so. So we should have a mid tony center. And then I think we're going to have it quite light around here too. So let's save that. See how that looks. Yeah, we've got quite a nice bright halo around the edges there. So let's save that, Command S or Control S on the PC. And let's just do one final one, save as number three. Click OK. And let's just jump back to Flash and see what our third one looks like here. You see we've got a very dark area near the center. It's very light in the middle, kind of mid tony around the edges. So let's create a dark center. So there we go, we're just going to start layering some really dark brush strokes here. But we're always maintaining this light area in the center, because that's our visual constant. Really, really dark. And let's start lightening up our middle part. Which is going to be our lightest area in this particular one. And start darkening this mid tony outside area. Keeping it nice and mid tony there. Doing some more lightening up of central part. So we want this to be really, really light. And again, we're just going to make sure that we've got a nice mid tony edge, which really contrasts with that white in the center. Okay, might just darken it up a little bit here. So darkest in the middle, with the exception of this area here. Um, nice and light here. And then mid turny around the edges. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to save that. We can jump back. You see, we've got mid tone in the edge, light around the center, really dark in the middle. So let's save that. Let's just take a look at all three, the ones we've made, and see how they look. So that's our first. That's our second. That's our third. One, two, three. So we've got a really quite nice whoosh there. We just compare that to the one we made in Flash. See, there's maybe a little bit more detail in that one. Um, and that's something that you can tweak. But let's jump back. Let's go File, New, create our 1080p Flash document. And just like we did before, we can import those three PSD files onto the stage. File, Import. Just select them all, hold down shift, click open on my keyframes, that's all fine. I'm going to move them all onto the same layer just by grabbing them, dropping them onto layer one. Press F5 to extend the last one. 
Let's see what it looks like. There we go, we've got a nice washing background there. I think it maybe needs a little bit of tweaking to put some more detail in, maybe to change this central section a little bit. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep it white, but it might need a little bit more difference in between the three drawings. Again, we can turn off looping, hold down shift to select all three keyframes, copy them, Go to insert, new symbol, call it perspective wash green. Make sure it's a graphic symbol. Click OK. And paste those three frames in there. Create a new layer. We can delete the original and pull a new one in from the library. Use our Align tools to stick it in the center. Hold down Command to make it last for a bit longer. Just stretch it out. And right click on the symbol and distribute it to layers so that it's got its own layer with the name of the symbol on it. Delete layer four because it's empty now. Now I've got a nice whooshing background. Really cool. And perhaps if we add a new layer and I just stick an oval there we can see now looks like the oval is whooshing through the air in a cool and exciting way so there you go it's as simple as that have a go yourself i'll see you in the next lesson hi if you enjoyed this lesson why not consider checking out the hextuber coloring and activity book on my website hextuber.com it's suitable for kids and adults alike and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com and WH Smiths. Cheers.